What's up guys? So in this video, I'll be talking about how to paint the beginning stages of a landscape by Thomas Kincaid. This picture is uh, called the Garden of Prayer. So I'll be showing you how to do the basics of it, the background colors, the, the blocking in process, just how to set up all the preliminary steps before you get started on the actual uh, details of the painting. So. You can see here that on the bottom right corner that there's a couple bushes here, the pathway, and it already has a lot of detail on there. Just a lot of like a variety of colors and stuff, even in these uh, simple items that you have here. So I'll be starting to show how to begin all the basic colors on here, all the basic building blocks before you really get going with the rest of the detail on here. So let's begin the bottom right corner I have a uh, pale brownish color that I'll be using for the pathway it's a very innocuous color and so when it comes to painting backgrounds and establishing the patterns you're not going to want to go with any kind of bold colors yet because that's going to be safe for later on with uh, the further details but with all these basic colors and outlines you just want to paint some very like grayish uh, very mono monochrome tones on there in order to uh, create that uh, the backdrop effect I'm just using a lot of simple shapes simple colors to do that and I'm using a uh, a brush called a bright it's got a it's got more coarser bristles on there so it helps out to uh, just throw paint on there and it's a, it's a lot more effective. You can use any brush you want to, but if you use that bright type of brush, it's just easier to lay the paint on there at a more rapid level. So save the softer brushes for a later time where you're gonna want to um, get more of the blending and mixing. So you can see here, I'm just adding more of the textures on here. I'm adding the, uh, the leaves or whatever on the bushes. I mean, I'm not gonna like paint all the details here in the beginning, but you can see that I'm already just establishing like where the shadows are gonna be, where the leaves are gonna be. And this is just like the, the base building blocks of it. It doesn't really matter because the most important part here is that I'm throwing paint on there all over the canvas, just making sure I cover everything up, cover up all the, uh, the pink underpainting. So it doesn't really matter where the paint goes as long as I have the uh, the basic measurements of where the items are gonna be so that's why the grid makes such a huge difference because it just helps uh, approximate where everything's gonna be and so I'm just painting the block th for the shadows and with uh, the greens and the, the flowers are gonna be on top of the bush and it doesn't matter if like the colors interfere with each other because that's that's kind of the whole point right now is that you mix them together and blend them in together so that way it has just a good foundation of it because this way you're gonna have that uh, that layer on there and part of the painting a good bold landscape is having layers of color on there in the right places because the more layers of paint you have on there the better the color the better and more solid the color is gonna be so right now I'm just painting like the basic building blocks because I mean, realistically, I mean, I'm not going to paint a painting two or three times over just for the sake of having good, good solid colors on it. That's why um, it's good to just have this, uh, this basic framework in the beginning. So that way you have like the basic approximation of where the colors are going to be. And that way you can just stack on top of them accordingly with, with uh, being efficient too. So you, you can start to see that the bushes are being formed in a, in a very, very rough format. And obviously I'm gonna go back at a later time when the paint starts to dry to uh, start applying more of the, the details on there, which I'll be showing in a later video. So this video is just a basic introduction of it, obviously. And so I'm, I have pretty much the colors established on here on this, uh, this section of the grid. So once I have that done, now I get that uh, softer bristle brush and then I just start to blend in everything together. I'm blending in the edges of where the various colors they, uh, they meet, where they collide together. I'm just blending in the, uh, the edges together 
And I'm doing it in a very gentle fashion so that way the colors don't mix in too much with the, uh, the opposite color, especially where the, the darks and the lights meet. I just very gently blend them together so they can transition much more easy. And so that's pretty much wrapping up that, uh, that building block. And so that's what I'll be doing with uh, the rest of the, uh, the, the, uh, the canvas. So what I did was I had the, uh, the 4x4 grid. And you can have like any kind of grid you want to. You can do like 4x4, 8x8, I don't know, 5x5 or whatever. But I mean, I do 4x4 because it's just efficient. It helps me d divide up the, the grid in a very efficient manner. It just makes math a lot easier that way. But it's just as long as you're able to proportionally match the things on there, that's all that matters. And of course, this is you know such a high level painting that it will be important to have a grid unless you are comfortable doing it freehand. But that's just not my style, though. Okay. Anyway, so let's look at a little, uh, let's look at another example of the uh, the grid. So here we have on the on the top left corner, I'm beginning to paint the beginning stages of that background sky. The background sky, you know, obviously is overcast because it's white. And then you have those uh, those distant background trees. And uh, specifically, you know, Kincaid, he's known for painting these uh, these vast background trees to be like a grayish purplish type of color and of course i diluted that color with uh adding some gray to it to that purple mixture so it's like you can see that hint of purple on there but mainly though it is uh more of a grayish uh bluish type of manner and of course uh you can be generous with the white paint on there too because it, even though um it's, it's a bright color just be generous with the white paint that you apply to it because it is gonna blend in with the background and it's gonna be like one of the lightest brightest parts of the painting this uh, this background part and it's gonna have a great contrast with uh, the other parts of the details because these paintings do tend to have uh, darker parts too with the shadows within the, the details up front with the bushes and the trees and, and the buildings and stuff and so over here, it's just a lot of gentle colors, um, you know, applying that grayish, bluish type of color. And of course, I'm going back to using that, uh, that bright brush. But again, it doesn't really matter. You can, you can still use the, the more soft bristle if you want to. It's all about just efficiency. And um, I'm mixing in the edges. Don't forget to mix in the edges, especially with these background colors. That's the primary part is to mix in the edges properly so you have uh, that very gentle um, color transition with everything. And also keep in mind that it doesn't matter like how accurate you are as long as you have like the basic building blocks in the, the main parts of like where they're going to be. You know, like those background trees, you know, they're these weird oval shapes. I mean, I will go back at a later time to fix them up, to re refine everything, to sculpt them. And it's important to just uh, lay the paint on there. That's that's your primary goal, as your primary focus, to lay the paint on there. And also to have, like, a little bit of variety of colors, too. You can kind of tell that I'm adding some bluish mixtures into the green, other sections of green I'm adding a little bit of yellow a small amount of orange too just for that sake of variety and um, yeah so when you're looking at the reference photo pay attention to like the the way that the colors are um, gathered together like on a more macro scale because when you look at the reference photo it can be overwhelming to gain an understanding of how the the colors um, come together that's why you just want to uh, kind of estimate where they are like estimate like the, the main color of that section you know for example like if you have like a, a cluster of trees or bushes just get an understanding of what that basic the base color is going to be what the, the color average averages out to be so that way you can have that basic framework established. And so with the shadows, uh, just get those main building blocks of shadows on there. And that's all that matters at this point because everything else is, um, you know, getting the basics down. 
Um, you know, the, like the reds, like in this, this top right corner, you can see that I got the reds on there because like the average color of that tree is, is red. And so you just kind of guesstimate what you're doing with that. And uh, the color transitions of the white to the green, it's gonna be, you know, pretty easy. I mean, it, it's, it pretty much explains itself. I would say that this is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, like, I think I'm, honestly, I'm over explaining a lot of things. It's just, it's so simple. You just add paint on there, transition, and you um, guesstimate what the colors are going to be. I mean, it's, it's really self-explanatory. And I think a lot of artists, they underestimate what they know already when they uh, begin a painting. Even though if the painting is highly detailed and high, high level as this one, you know, you know, just take the basic steps towards it. Okay, so this is what we have so far. We have the entire canvas covered up with all the basic building blocks of the painting. Look at all the tree outlines. You can tell that there's already a landscape starting to uh, come forth with this painting. You got the outlines for the sky, the water, and that gazebo. So stay tuned for my other videos where I'll be showing you how to get more of the details on there. And so thank you for watching.